Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I'm sitting down here by the river. We're starting to get a few spring days. We're still definitely below average. I think our average high right now is like 52 degrees. And it's like 48 right now, but uh, we're starting to get everything to open up. I don't know if you can see it. The river behind me is high. It's out of the banks right now. So that's pretty much ripping out all the the remaining ice in any of the backwaters. So we should be able to start getting out here, hopefully sometime soon. Uh, the water is still like 39 degrees. It's super cold. There's a bunch of walleye guys running up to the dam, uh, but there's pretty much no bass activity that's taking place yet. But it will be soon. Once the ice is fully gone at that point, it really starts warming up pretty quick and I'm looking forward to getting out. We'll hopefully start getting you some on the water video footage. Uh, but I have gotten a lot of questions from viewers that want me to talk specifically about the movements of northern smallmouth and northern largemouth uh, that occurs at this time of year. You know, after ice out, you have a period where you kind of have a transition from wintering stuff to pre-spawn stuff. It happens really fast, but if you're not on top of it, you probably won't catch anything. Uh, but if you fully understand what's going on, you could actually have some really good days of fishing. And the cool thing is this all applies to fish down south as well. It's, it's funny how, you know, it's just a little bit different of a water temperature range. I mean, we're talking about here ice up. So you're talking about 30 degree water temps versus down south. You might be talking about water that gets down into the 40s, but you still have similar type transitions of both fish. So that's what I want to talk about today. I do want to remind you guys that we do have our uh, upcoming live stream chat at the end of the month. So if you're not a member yet, you should become a member just so you can engage in those. Plus you get additional videos and some other uh, other stuff as well, like chances to win uh, some prizes and stuff that I'm gonna have just for my members. So if you wanna partake in that, make sure you become a member of the channel. Uh, it'll be a great way to really dive in depth in some of the questions that you have and you can get a lot of input from some of the other viewers as well. So check that out guys. Uh, and we can get into some detailed discussions about things like today's topic which is what happens with the largemouth and smallmouth like where should you look and a lot of it goes back to what they do during the winter you have to understand what both largemouth and smallmouth do during the winter if you're up north so specifically let's start with smallmouth the smallmouth will winter in super deep water super deep being anywhere from 20 to 50 feet depending on the lake that you're on uh, but they'll set up on rocky flat stuff, they'll set up on points, they'll set up on shoals, but basically you need to know that they winter out deep. So what happens once the ice comes off is they'll start making a transition, but the first place you should look are still those wintering areas. If you happen to know where they winter and you don't find them after the ice comes out, you know they've moved on you and they've made their transition shallow. So, you know, if you're right when the ice comes off, you're going to be looking for flat spots on deep points. You're going to be looking for rock bars on shoals uh, or, or humps. Uh, saddles are a great place to look. Any place that there's a hard bottom that's a deep water area, that's a really good place to look because that's where they're going to be sitting for the winter. Once the ice comes off, if they're not there, then they're going to do a couple of things. They're going to move up to the first transition that's just outside of the spawning ground. So. If you're on a lake, in that case, uh, what they'll do is they'll move up to, you know, that first deep break line that's right outside of a flat that's got a bunch of rock and gravel transitions. If you know where they spawn, basically that's where you're going to be starting to look is any place right outside of that. The first deep break lines, the first set of points outside of those spawning flats. Um, you know, from a bait choice, it, bait choice isn't nearly as important as finding the fish. You need to find the fish in order to catch them. Once you find them, you can catch them on jerk baits, you can catch them on swim baits, on your drop shots, Ned rigs, typical smallmouth style baits, uh, but you need to find them. And generally, if you find them, there's gonna be a bunch of them. It's not just gonna be one fish. So it's, it can lead to really good fishing. Um, if you're on a river with a smallmouth, a lot of times what they'll do is winter in deeper holes, more slack water areas that have some depth. And then, you know, once you get the warm up that occurs, that's when they'll start sliding up more to rock shorelines, to rock banks, riprap. If you've got rock flats, that's really good places to look. And then right out again, right outside of those spawning areas. So if, generally speaking for smallmouth on rivers, they're gonna spawn in a little bit more slack water 
but they still like to have some current generally, uh, a nice meandering current going over the top of them. And if you can find that and find a point right outside of that or a little rock bar right out in front of that, that's generally where they're gonna be right when the ice comes off. But they can be kind of picky, you know, they, they really can be lockjaw a lot more than largemouth this time of year. If you're talking about largemouth and you're talking about on a natural lake or a reservoir, uh, what they're going to do up here is they're going to generally move into the shallowest wa water possible. I'm talking about those mud bottom bays that during the summer are choked out in weed. They really like to get up into super shallow water. You know, during the winter months under the ice, a lot of times they'll be in those shallow areas in the shallow weed bays. And a lot of times they could be out suspended out deeper around, you know, deep bluegills and that type of thing. And that kind of depends on the lake you're on. But uh, generally speaking, as soon as the ice comes off, they move into the shallowest bays they can find because those bays will warm up way quicker than the surrounding water. So you're going to be looking for any sort of isolated cover within those bays that they might hold on for heat. So you're talking about lay down tree, a dock, a weed clump, cattail clumps, anything like that. Green weeds from the previous year can be really good. Pad stems can be really good. Uh, just Anything that can absorb heat that the largemouth can push up into is going to be where they're at. Uh, that's pretty much the only place you need to look. Even on rivers, the same thing out here on the rivers, they're going to be in the shallow backwaters that you generally won't catch any fish out of in the summer because they're either just too shallow and too warm and too choked out in weed. The fish just don't use that during the summer. The fish on a river generally like to set up more around current versus way in the backs of some backwater sloughs. But in, the, in this time of year, when the ice comes off, that'll be the warmest water. There'll be a lot of bait fish and things that start moving back there. You get a lot of uh, initial bug life, you know, hatches, that type of thing that draw the bluegills and bait fish and the largemouth will go in there and eat them. And they can be really active. You can find areas in those backwaters, whether you're on a, a you know, way in the back of a bay on a natural lake or in a backwater on a river, you can find water that'll be 10 degrees warmer than the main channel or the main lake. And those fish can be really active. And when you find them, generally there's a bunch of largemouth in those areas. So it can be really good fishing. So uh, it can be a good time to get out. Right now, like I said, unfortunately here, the natural lakes still have ice. It's middle of April, natural lakes still have ice and the backwater sloughs, depending on which slough it is, may or may not have some ice. None of them are fully uh, ice free yet, but as soon as they do pop free of complete ice, they'll really start getting good. So guys, I hope that was helpful. I get a lot of questions from people wanting to know about northern fish. Uh, I hope it was helpful in terms of getting you out in that early season to catch a few. But again, it, it's similar down south. It just You're not dealing with ice. You're just dealing with cold water periods. Uh, but you can apply the same sort of logic to southern bass as you can the northern bass. But if you understand what they're doing right after the ice comes off, you can have some really good days. You don't have to be out chasing walleye like these guys. Although... It's probably the best time to catch walleye too. Anyways, guys, if you enjoy the channel, hit the subscribe button, like the uh, video, and stay tuned. Another video coming out tomorrow.